The Ascension of Rhino. The Ascension of Rhino. So uh, is this saying that he just came into his his own How baby? Rhino went from arriving in ECW to becoming ECW's most feared beast on a roster. Okay. Um, I, well, again, I love Rhino. I was just with him this weekend and, uh, I can't say enough good things about him. I got to work with him. I've got, I've taken that gore. I don't even know how many times I took that gore. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, you know, it's all about, this business is all about elevation. You know, how can you elevate your character? And do you get a chance to, does management think enough of you to put a belt on you, to put, use you in a certain angle, use you a certain way? Um, Rhino has an it quality. He's still working. He's yeah. still over. You know, he's 47 years old. We were just talking about this. He's 47 years old. He looks fantastic. He's in great shape. And he's he's such a mild-mannered person in real life compared to the craziness that you see in the ring. And I'm killing his gimmick right now. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I don't really care. Um, but like when, when you see him in the ring, you believe that this guy is going to tear somebody's head off because he's a monster, his promos, he's got so much adrenaline throw like through his body. He's literally shaking when he's delivering his lines, which is great. It's very believable, you know? Um, and he, he's a solid, solid performer. So, um, I, you know, well-deserving again, probably should have happened way before the last year. Um, I think, I can't remember when he came in, but you know, I loved working with him, but I hated taking that frigging gore. Cause God, he was like four times bigger than I was. <laughs> So thick too, right? It's like it's like, like a, a tree a trunk. <laughs> yeah, it's like a tree trunk. He's just a he's a big dude, but he he knows his craft and um he does it well and he's still performing. And people, you know, people don't get tired of Rhino. I read I yeah, I'm a big internet guy and I read comments like when people put clips up of of certain things, I read comments. And I'm not going to mention names and a lot of people will say, "Oh my god, 32 years later, get off my TV. You're, you, you know, you overwelcomed your stay, this, that, and the other. You don't read that about Rhino. People are still invested in his character. Yeah. They yep. still like what he does. It's still creative. Um, he's found a way to transform it and keep it fresh and not stale and not look like an old man doing it. So no, not at all. Yeah. He's still rocking and rolling and I love him for that. It's great. Him, him and Heath, they turned like oh, basically a throwaway I cannot, team. I cannot even this. tell you how much I love Heath, but that's for another day. I've gotten to know him so well the last couple of months. He is such a gem in this business, such a great, great human being. That's He's great. like become one of my favorite people. That's but, awesome. Yeah. All right. Here's, the here's something that you had a, a huge impact on. Oh. And that is from impact player to main event player, the just incredible championship victory and title reign i think it's 161 days that he was yeah there yep. that he was world champion okay 17 title defenses on television 17. and pay-per-view so you were there you were right right at ringside for all of it yes the, uh let's hear about the ascension of just incredible well i mean i i feel like he he was pretty over as a heel when he did the impact players thing with lance um but again when when you're you know, do you, are you happy with just being a tag team champion or do you want to go after that world title? Right. You know, some people are okay with, with tag team gold and there's nothing wrong with it. It's great. Some people prefer to work as, as a tag team. Some people do it their whole careers. You know, they'd like to have a partner with them. Uh, in PJ's case, um, I felt bad. I felt bad for Jason because when they put me with, with PJ, I uh, somebody sent me the clip not too long ago, and I watched it, and you can see Jason's face <laughs> at the arena, like like he's standing there, but you know PJ just focuses on me, and I don't know if Paul told him to do that or not, but you know later on, just uh, Jason was just like, yeah, I kind of got pushed out of the equation, and I was just like. I had no idea what was going like. I was just told you're going to, I thought we were all going to be a group. Like, right. 
you know, I did not know that Jason wasn't going to be a part of it, which kind of made me upset. But, um, you know, that, that wasn't my call. Would have been all. funny to have you two playing off each other. I mean, but was there really a need for Jason? You, you could make the argument. No, but I could I see it, you know, as it developed. <sighs> I just that, felt bad. I felt, like, I, you know, you, I didn't want him to think that it was me saying, oh, let's get Jason out of here. Because <laughs> I, I couldn't, I, I didn't care if he was there or not. Like, it, I, you know, I, it wasn't me. It was, right. it was the higher powers. But um, I feel like G PJ and myself, I, I compare it to Shane and I a lot. It was very comfortable. Uh, it was organic. Um, I remember the first night we we worked together, I was like, oh, we have to figure out like a, a pose or something. And we did the thing where I hand him the belt, he gives me the, the cane and we just, and it was just, we didn't practice or anything. We kind of looked at each other. We were like, Hey, <laughs> that was pretty good. And we just started doing it on every show and it worked, you know? And, and like Paul told me, he wanted me to be a, a mouthpiece for him. But we ended up both using the stick, you know, and he was a good talker as well. Um, I just felt it was a good pairing and we got a yeah. lot of heat together. It worked, you know, and I, I feel it, it. I'll argue with anyone. I think he was a very credible champion. Yeah, I I, I, I think, you know, he was a good worker. Um, and I'm saying this about everyone, but I, I honestly feel like if if they weren't good workers, they wouldn't have held up in, in ECW or anywhere for that matter. You know, Paulie oh, would have, they, they would have been shown the yeah. door quick. <laughs> Paulie wouldn't have somebody out there representing the company that couldn't work, you know, and, and uh, back then PJ could go, you know, he was good and he, he was a pleasure to work with. Yeah. I've really grown to appreciate your pairing more as the years have gone on and we've watched so much stuff because, you know, obviously like I, I watched it, then I got to know PJ and see his side of things, but then I got to see your side of things too over the last few years. I've really grown to appreciate your pairing more as we watch nice. all of these um, these videos. Well, so. thank you. Yeah, it was like I said, it's it, it's not so much like you know I can compare Shane Douglas to Tommy Dreamer with our pairings, and that was apples and oranges. That was a totally different thing. But I feel like PJ was the closest thing to to that that chemistry that i had with shane you know i it there was a spark with pj it was it was a very very good pairing i felt and i think the fans felt it too and paul loved it you know because right. if he didn't he wouldn't have kept me with him